I'm not here for the tax bill, really, I'm doing the tax bill. Are you going to take any comment on it, Jeffrey? Well, yeah, we're going to take comment. Just after we finish this one, as I have four of them. No, I mean a comment on the report. On the comment on the report. No, the number four is the, uh, yeah. is yeah. the nepotism. Can somebody, can yeah. I make a comment yeah. on the nepotism? Do what? Let me finish out the fact that we're going to do it. Sure. Can I say something? Since this involves uh, an officer and an employee, you can go to executive session for personnel matters if you want. Okay. Wow. That's just the law. The law, the law on this is clear. It takes three minutes to Google and you can see the difference in the two.
with his opinion on it. I personally, and this has come before this board several times a year, two years ago, and everything else. I'm probably going to go hire an attorney and see what my rights are and what I can do. Now, that, you know, that's, that's me, and I, I, I know the way out the time to do it. I mean, that's, I mean, it's, that's my opinion. So, I, I just will say this. I talked to Tommy. I don't want to talk about the facts here. If you don't want to talk about the facts, or you don't want to talk about the facts. I talked to Tommy. This issue was raised in November by Donna. As a result of that, Gloria asked for the personnel information. We did the research. Before I issued an opinion, I called Tommy on a Sunday or Saturday to tell Tommy what I found, and I called you and told you what I found. Then on Monday, Tommy called me after reading the opinion, and he was pretty mad about it. And he wanted to know, he, he said I was retaliating against him. I wanted to know who authorized you to do that. That's the only question that I asked. No, no. You and said, then what did you, you said I was retaliating against you. And that who authorized me to do that? At which point, I took that as a threat, and you, you caught me on guard. A threat. Threat. Yeah. 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 Is that not the explicit
towards you, they said that, no problem. I said, I do not, not want to cause a conflict. And I was told again that there's no problem. It was no problem. Sherry worked here, Jeff, uh, Jeff Sherry was on the boy. Worked. Sherry. So now you come along and all of this stuff, you want to dig up, you want to go to digging, probably half this place is kin. Half of any place you they're go not, to is kin. They're not kin within the right yeah. of grief. And yeah. when you got on the you board, what you did, when you got on the board, you it was perfectly fine for you to be on this board. Where and we can talk about executive session. Well, I don't even want to talk to you about this anymore. I want to let the well, that's you know, coming in behind you figure it out. And we'll have, a, your we'll have a an opinion. We'll have an opinion that's not one side or the other. So <laughs> you're, you're, what you're doing is you know you're fixing to be gone. And that's what you take taking how, down. Because you blame me. How am I saying that? And I'm not going to go down and post. I said, Jeffrey, we're not getting anywhere. How, how is it that you know that I'm about to be gone? How do I know? Yeah. It's like Jerry, he called everybody. And nobody's talking to you, fella. Hey, how, now, how, how now, is it that the you know? The comment section is not open right now. How is it you know what you know? Don't go on. How is it you know what you know? Jeffrey, we're not getting I'm, you. I'm getting you the law. This has already been discussed eight, ten years ago. It's not right. It was not right, it was not right. It's not right. It was not right whenever his son was terminated. It was well, not right. Well, here's the thing. It, it's obviously the chair going to do something about this. So, now we, come, we need to come up with it. If that's what needs to be done, I will get off this board. I don't mind doing it. I don't even feel we need more anyway. Here, here's a new opinion. And so I'm going to leave. No, I, I'm going to find a lawyer and see where exactly I stand. I'm going to That's what I want to do too. Yeah. Okay. And I want to do see if everything that he has done has been legal. When was Corey terminated? We don't need to discuss an employee. Yeah, well, we can't. We can't go into court. <laughs> Why don't we give both of them the opportunity and the chance to seek their own counsel and then see what happens? However, they want to do it. But this one now. What are we guilty of? No, 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 no. I'm talking. Yeah, about somebody what, is. No, no, I don't mean the statute. What is the fine? What's the punishment? What is it? Is it misdemeanor or felony? Misdemeanor up to a hundred to a thousand dollars. In Liberty County, they indicted the county commissioner for this. So this, that, and that's pending right now. And so the fact that I mean, I did some research myself in the Texas Municipal League. It says a board has a general manager or a city manager that's in charge of the hiring and firing and nepotism. Evolves around yeah, him. That's not what I said. I read the same. What the Attorney General opinion, specific, and you and I have talked about this before, the Attorney General opinion specifically on this issue states that the hiring authority is the directors or public officials with section 573.0541 of the government code. And accordingly, they may not partic uh, participate in the employment of an individual related to any director within the third degree of consanguinity or by the second degree of affinity. That's John Corrin, 0184. A public official may not delegate his or her hiring authority to prevent nepotism conflicts. What you're suggesting is exactly the logic that they took at Drainage District 6. And that didn't turn out very well. If y'all want, we can go to this exercise. Here. First question. The rule is, except as provided by law, a public official, which is you, all five of you, 
may not appoint a person to a position or hire a person to a position that is to be directly or indirectly compensated from public funds or fees of office if the person is related by blood within the third degree. That is Tommy's situation. Or if the person is related by blood, I mean marriage within the second degree. Okay. First question you have to ask. Is there a relationship between a public official, which is each one of y'all, and an employee within the third degree of consanguinity or the second degree? Answer here. Yes. Yes. Below that, I have who the hiring authority is. It's y'all. And the reason why it's y'all is because you can delegate it to him, but you can take it back. And you, Greg Turner, have done that. In this meeting, you are doing that right now. You delegated authority to him to hire and fire people. You get delegated authority to him. But I don't tell him who to hire and fire. You told me he couldn't hire somebody without talking to you. I did not tell you that. That's a false faith lie. Okay. That's a false faith lie, Peter. All right. Exception. Regardless, that's the law. There's an exception to this. The state's nepotism laws do not apply to the hiring of a person if the person is employed in the position immediately before the election or the appointment. That his wife was hired in 2000. He was appointed in 2010. His son worked here, and Tommy was appointed. And since they were both appointed, the only thing the family member has to do is been there for 30 days before they were appointed. You did that. Check. So, was the employee hired? The next question. Was the employee hired for the requisite amount of time before the public official's election or the appointment to the board? In both of your situations, the answer is yes. So, at the time that you were trying to get on the board, and the time he was trying to get on the board, and he was trying to get on the board. Whatever, y'all both got appointed. At that time, you both talked to a lawyer, and the lawyer said, yeah, y'all are good. Because you are good. The next question. Was the employer hired continuously? Nepotism laws apply to a person who has been continuously employed both before, both prior to, and after the appointment or election of his or her relative up to the time of the appointment. There's your sign. You can go show your lawyer. Any separation from employment breaks the chain of continuality and makes the exception inapplicable. No, boy, you got to start over. So, in the event, and you'll find out at some point, that either one of your spouses or children were terminated, and then they were rehired after you were a board member. Now, wait a minute. You said after I was a board member. What if I'm a board member? So, before, you were not a board member, but your wife worked here for 10 years. He wasn't a board member, but his son worked here as a temporary employee for on and off for several years. So, if she got terminated right now and came back? She couldn't come back. I mean, I couldn't be on the board. You couldn't be, yeah. It would be a violation of nepotism law. Being like I said here. Okay. So, if your wife was terminated in 2011, and then you made, you were part of the board that hired your wife back. I understand. You're a violation of nepotism laws. That's, so the next question. Has that employee been continuously hired before and after you were on the board? I don't want to answer that question. If you can check yes to each one of those three questions, you're not in violation of the nepotism laws. But if one of those three questions is a no, then you're in violation of the nepotism laws. So, let's go a little bit further. The 
The next question is, what, what, what are the penalties? The next question is, has, he, has any public official approved the payment of compensation to an employee of the official who knows that the employee is ineligible? Each one of y'all are a public official. I don't know if you know that if there's a nepotism law. I told you my opinion. Yeah. This lady has told you her opinion. So what is the what what is it if you know that there's a nepotism violation and you guys continue to pay the employee? It is the same violation as being the employee and the director together. You all are just as guilty. <clears throat> if convicted, a director who violates a nepotism prohibition shall be removed from his or her position. An official who violates the Texas, the, the basic nepotism law, the, the exception to the nepotism law, or the, the knowledge about compensation commits an a, a offense of official misconduct. An office, an offense under these section is a misdemeanor punished by a fine not less than a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. I guess my question. So, so let's look at this. The next issue. So what? It's a misdemeanor. Right? Well, right next door in Liberty County, they have a county commissioner who hired the other county commissioner's best friend. And guess what happened? He got indicted. He's under indictment right now by the DA. Jefferson County, we know what's Mark knows what's going on there vividly. Miriam Johnson is appointed to the board. She then hires her daughter to be the purchasing agent. What happened? Uh, if you've read the newspaper at all, you know that. I mean, she now resigned, and the reason why I told you that is because her daughter is still working there. Her situation is different than your situation, though, for reasons I don't want to discuss out here. So there, I don't know how else I can tell you. No, you've done your job. That is my job. You did your job. Y'all want to go to the That's up to y'all, whatever y'all want to do. Let's go to the next That's when he was I remember thinking he was
might want to ask James. He was the president of the ECISD for 17 years, and he was lying to let his daughter go to work at the ECISD. He's a living example right there. Uh, resigned in his seat so his child couldn't work for uh, Chambers ISD. Bobby Wade's father, he was on the board for you know, 10, 19 years, and he resigned so his uh, daughter Erica could teach at ECISD. Just food for thought. Okay, I have another thing that I uh, want to bring to your attention in case you may have missed this in the heated discussion. When the discussion about nepotism first started, Tommy Gilbert was very, very defensive. He, uh, he was attacking uh, Hubert Oxer, the attorney, and he made the comment about, you know that you're going to be gone. Because on the agenda, number 19, it says talk about terminating Hubert as the attorney for Trinity Bay. So Tommy Gilbert said, the only reason why you're bringing up this now is because you know that you're gonna be gone. Hubert answered him, how do you, you know, know I'm gonna be gone? He said, because you're going to be gone. Now, these words are very telling because this is very illegal, it's against the law, that apparently these board members amongst themselves, you're talking about Tommy Gilbert, obviously, possibly Greg Turner, possibly Scott Kalin, possibly Mark Mitchell, all among themselves, there are four. Remember there's four, and all you need is three votes, have already decided that they're going to fire Hubert Oxford as the attorney. And Tommy Gilbert almost came out and <laughs> said that they've already hired somebody. So in the scheme of things, it may not seem important, but it is, because this is how, it, it shows you how this board works. Behind the scenes, illegally, making decisions. Gentlemen, 619, January 1st, this is designed for an executive session. Now we're gonna go back into the regular session. And Gloria, to answer your question, what we've done is Tommy and I, we're going to get individual lawyers and have it dissolved on February, and I'm going to get a good opinion on this on my term. So Tommy's going to get an opinion on my decision. What is that one, Thomas? Yes. Y'all didn't, didn't want to do one person, or three on? Yeah, well, we can. Three yeah, on this Yeah, we can. Well, I mean, it, it's a legal question. There's something that you if, should you know. want a, if you want a second legal opinion, uh, you know, we can get an attorney to give you that. Or you can get your own. That's okay. up to y'all. Right. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. Okay. On the nepotism thing. Okay, and then you said something about the February meeting. Is it going to be... If we're gonna, if we're, this is going to be... It's not going to be table. We're going to definitely put this to bed at the February meeting. Okay. So you're going to table. So, I mean, we're, 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 that's when we're going to put it to bed. You need a motion to table at the table. Yeah. Like you need. Can, can we just get some clarification? It's, 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 this is not gonna, I'm telling you, when I did this the first time in 2017, I've spent hours on it. It's not, it's not, it's not, nepotism is not the most obvious thing. You would think it is, but it, it, it's, you really have to dig, I mean, to get it right. And that's what I did in 2017. I really think that the district, y'all should get somebody, you know, I just sent y'all an email with a PowerPoint presentation that a guy did, and this guy I was telling y'all about. And if you don't use him, you don't have to use him. Look at it. But maybe I would make a motion to give James authority to engage 
reason why this board is in such conflict, excuse me, uh, one reason why this board is in such conflict is because in June, the attorney was hired to fix the mess that Trinity Bay was in. We had a general manager who consistently lied about the financial situation, who continually lied about projects, continually. And you had an attorney at the time who let it go on, who did nothing to answer the questions that other board members asked. Finally, we have somebody who is doing the work, doing his work. Just like you said, Tommy, he's doing his job. He's doing the work. You may not like what he's coming up with, but in the long run, this is exactly what's going to turn this board around, what's going to turn this entity around, is to have somebody who has taken the time and the passion to do the work to figure out what the problem is and present it to you. So don't kill the messenger. Do not kill the messenger. I will tell you a lot of people in this community didn't know anything about this attorney, but watching the videos and everything, they have, he's the best thing that has happened to this organization because he is doing the work and bringing it out to the public when it needs to be done. So if you want to be an effective board, if you want to work you know, for all the people out here and everything, let him do his job, present it to you, and then you decide how you're going to fix it. If it wasn't for this man, we would not know in August of 2021 we were going to be zero money in the bank in water and sewer. We would not have known that two and a half million dollars was lost going for all these projects and we were going to make millions of dollars on them. Let the man do his job about the nepotism, all that kind of stuff, he is doing his job. When somebody files a FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, and goes to the attorney, the attorney is obligated by law to do what it takes to respond to that Freedom of Information Act. And just because you don't like what it says, doesn't mean you have to let him know. So my, my, my personal opinion, well it's not my personal opinion, people in this community know that if you fire the attorney what you're doing is making a commitment to the people in this community that you go back to the old ways. To the old ways of talking amongst each other, you know, when the board isn't in, the, in session, making those kind of, kind of decisions, what you call them, walking quarrels, whatever you want to call them. I appreciate the board's follow-up, or more so actually Hubert's, uh, on an issue that I raised at the last meeting, which was nepotism. The Texas government code is very clear that if a board member is in violation of the deputies laws, it requires any board member in violation of the laws to be removed. Moreover, if notice is given of a violation of the code, the other board members may be held liable for official misconduct. They authorize the payment of the employee who forms the basis of any nepotism violation. If there is any violation of the code, that will probably be ignored by this board, which we're kind of seeing now again. But. Uh, Rather than citing endless codes and statutes, I love Agenda 4 handle that. But know this, we know the law and the facts of the issue and urge any board violation of these laws due to do the right thing immediately. Hubert originally addressed this because I would asked about Jeff and his wife being a conflict based off some other things. I didn't even know your son worked here at the time, actually. But upon finding out, I told him and turning some other things to the board that I was going to turn this into the board. So for the guy y'all hate so much for doing your job, he actually stopped me from turning that into the board so he could handle it himself. Nobody said we hate him. Well, I'm just going by, I'm just going by your, your response and predetermined that you're going to fire him at the end of this I meeting. Hate I, I'm and just, and nobody said we going to fire him. But I was just letting you know why all that come about. And actually, you did when we fired you and we get the new lawyer. That's a discussion for another day. Yeah. Let's move on. Good idea. Okay, 19, discuss and take action and next Tommy 
you seconded the motion. I thought, I thought Jeffrey made a motion to keep you. He did. Now yeah. Jeffrey initially at first, yes. But there was no second. But there was no second. There was no second. Did you second? Well, this is yeah, great movie. Great movie. Great movie. So now you have a vote. If you got two in favor, and are y'all, if you're in favor, you're in favor. Would do you support Greg's motion? No. Do you not support it? Do you not support it? No. Okay. Do you not support it? No. Okay. So your motion failed. So Hubert, you are still yes. the attorney. Three yes. two. Thank you. Yes, uh, Scott, I have, I have a question. I need a clarification on this. It has to do with an nepotism issue that y'all want to talk about in the second session. So y'all. James, the authority to hire an attorney. Uh, do Jeffrey and Tommy have a say who that, do they approve who that attorney could be? Do we pay for it? That's right, that is paid for yes. And then the second part of the question is, when, he, when this attorney uh, studies Tommy's situation and Jeffrey's situation and then comes up with, it's an opinion. Is that going to be the final say? Is there going to be no more discussion? The attorney said this, the attorney said that, and like Jeffrey said earlier, it's going to be put to bed in February, so it's a done deal whether either party likes it or not. Is that, is that how it's going to be? Okay, thank you. Number nine, yes. discuss and take action if necessary on the firing we can sign an option. Can I say something since it involves me? Um, kind of following up on what James is saying, working here is kind of like being in that talk show, I mean that game show survivor. You know, you, you don't know what's 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 coming up, you know, who's trying to mess with you. What what you know, you can't just go about doing your job right here. It's it's hard. And then you have this constant cat and mouse game where somebody like Greg keeps trying to fire me. I don't, I don't know what the reason is this time. Uh, and but it's exhausting and it's completely counterproductive. We we have spent an hour talking about spindle top bottom. We haven't even begun talking about hand camera. We haven't talked about double bio. We haven't talked about stuff in the middle of this place. I don't see how y'all don't have a thousand employees out there cleaning the dishes right now. But all this back and forth constantly, whatever y'all do, it's it's crazy. And just because you have somebody like me telling you what you can't do, that doesn't I'm not doing that to be ugly. I'm doing it to help you stay out of places where you shouldn't be. You can have a lawyer that's not gonna say and if that's what you want, then I'm not your guy. But I'm tired. I, I'm tired of fighting with this place. I'm tired of fighting all the silliness, especially after all the work and effort I've given to this place. I mean, uh, James and I, I would bet we probably worked the same amount on this since June. And so whatever the agenda is, what I, I get, but don't don't sit here and say it's because I, I got I, I said something to Tommy. I said what I said to Tommy at the last meeting. That was discussed back then. You and I discussed what I talked to Tommy about for an hour and a half after the meeting. But if you're gonna you can't call somebody and attack them on the phone, especially after I gave him a courtesy call to tell him what was coming down the pipe and not expect to get a response back. That's just not reasonable. So I get it. If, if you guys want to hang your hat on that as some kind of excuse, so be it. But if the same situation happened again, I probably just wouldn't pick up the phone. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. So, but I'm tired. You know, and and this then James has got to be tired. They've got to be tired. So well, you, you have to admit you still
said in the public that we'd be broke by August. Remember saying that? Yeah, but I also remember you arguing that I was not telling the truth. That wasn't right. I said it before and I'll say it again, but I said, I don't see how we can afford to pay $15,000 a month. And you're cutting your wages, you're cutting your hours and not charging for everything you do. Why would you do that? Greg, we had this conversation last week. I'm not going to rehash it. You know, this is another silly excuse by you to try to fire me. And if that's what they want to do, that's what y'all do, then fire me. But don't give me some silly excuse. But I would like for you to know why. Well, do you think that – so you think if somebody else came in here, they would be cheaper? I think if somebody else came in here, you're doing James' job. I'm not doing James' job. Look at my bills. The manager has always put the gentleman's agenda. You're doing that job. I didn't charge you for it. All I do is type it. Y'all put what's on the agenda. You don't get charged for it. You don't get charged for it. Something that we don't have. You don't get charged for it. Look at your bills. Read something for one. I have looked at the bills. Okay, it says no charge next to it. Well, if we're ready to proceed, I'll make the motion that we terminate at least the contract between Dickinson and Oxford for a term. I second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No, nothing. Okay, let the record reflect. That's three. Zero. Tommy, Sandy, and the record being in favor. Thank you. Thank you. So it's only a couple of minutes, I assume, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll send you all the final bill. Thank you. May I ask a question, Scott? The last meeting, you seconded the motion to keep Huber. And I would like, and I think the media wants to know, and I would tell you the comments on Facebook, everybody is in support of Huber because he has brought transparency to this organization and accountability. I would like to know from you as a president, why did you vote? I'll be happy to talk to you about that later. Okay. I'll be calling your office or whatever because it's not the conversation. Okay. After the meeting, then we'd like to speak with you. Thank you. When do you have to have your paper? We go to print on Monday. So, you know, today's Wednesday. I'll send it up. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
up with me over the years in my relationship with Hubert Oxford, who was the attorney you released. He and I fought and been on the opposite sides probably 95% of the time. I'm hard-headed, he's hard-headed. I'm honest, he's honest. Although we saw things differently, he was an honest man. When you hired him, you did this community a favor. You got an attorney that whether you liked what he said or not, he told you the truth. Maybe he couldn't make you follow it. Maybe your head's harder than mine. But he told you things you didn't want to hear. He probably told you things you didn't want to follow advice. Because looking back over the meetings that I have not been able to attend, I can honestly tell you this is one time I agree with that man. I think you did a horrible thing to this community by letting him go. You don't like his transparency. You don't like him telling you the truth. Well, I'll tell you something. When I used to work at the courthouse in Harris County, a judge told a defendant one time, you better never lie to your attorney and never lie to your doctor. Wanna put you in jail, wanna put you in the hospital. Well, you refuse to listen to an honest attorney. Do you want to go back to the days where you have an attorney who can legally bend a law, but it's unethical? What's unethical? It's borderline dishonest. That's my opinion. I would like you to reconsider hiring Mr. Oxford. He's the best thing for this board. And like I tell you, I have fought him tooth and nail till I finally learned to listen to him and do the right thing. Do you want to do the right thing or do you just want to get by, put everything under a rock, shove it under a rug, and then someday it's going to be exposed. I'm just trying to keep you from embarrassing yourself. I have fought against Mr. Oxford. I've disagreed with him, but I'm going to tell you what. He did you one hell of a job, and he did all of us one hell of a job. And you hurt this community by getting rid of a very intelligent, hardworking man. And that's all i got to say, whether you want to hear it or not. Bexton came to work for the hospital board. That board at the time had about $900,000 cash on hand. Today that same board has over $12 million on hand. Would likely double that next year. Millions more in equity. And the hospital board gives quite a bit to the community from the schools all the way down to the local food bank. That's the guy you're fired. When Germer left Trinity Bay, you were almost broken under investigation. I don't know what the term for false and legal advice is. I refer to it as lies because it wasn't true or accurate. But intended to deceive people and manipulate speech well enough, most couldn't argue it. That said, Dermot represented by Gud Goodson and the two on the side, good to look at Kate, took part in a number of unethical, dishonest, and illegal activities. In the papers I handed to Mr. Jenkins, there are emails and documents showing where Germer built Trinity Bay for private land deal, it's listed as a private land deal, billed to the taxpayer, signed off on the former GM, and all of that's under Kate's name, and listed as a private land deal in the building. It's also documented that the majority of this board has known about it and acknowledged it in the past. Also, as Attached is a paper showing nepotism going back to 2018. Of course, more bad advice to address finance was as well. I would also like to note nepotism was promised to be on this agenda. The taxpayers are footing the bill, and there's no excuse for it not to be addressed. A bill should be available to taxpayers so they can see exactly how much of their money was wasted on something that the law lays out clearly. My name is Kate Leverett. I'm a partner at Germer PLLC. I have been practicing law for almost 10 years now, and the majority of that time has been representing governmental entities. We're pleased to provide our response to your request for proposal, and I'm here to answer any questions that the board may have. Would you like to make any comments about what we just spoken before you came on? Uh, 
Yes, um, so as you all know, previously, Grimmer did represent the board. Um, during that time, I did have minimal uh, interaction with the board. I would cover meetings for Mr. Goodson. I think something was brought out regarding a time entry back in 2014. I was an associate at that time, in all honesty, it was just an oversight. If the board is upset about it, I only heard about it yesterday through an email that was forwarded to me. We're more than happy to rectify it. I think it was for a minimal amount. We would reimburse you for that expense. Um, also, I'm not going to get into all of the allegations um, regarding that. Uh, Grimmer is a great law firm. I think that we do a great job representing our governmental clients. We've never had any sort of complaints against us. Um, all attorneys are different. They're probably going to provide you different opinions, etc. Um, I also know there's a question regarding um, nepotism. I believe Mr. Oxford provided one legal opinion, Mr. Goodson another. We'd be more than happy for the district attorney to send a request to the attorney general on whether or not nepotism issues arose. I think that would be the best neutral path to take on that. Um, but as far as those two issues, that is my opinion on those. What is your opinion on that, too? I'm not going to provide a legal opinion on that because I haven't been provided any of the documentation. I just heard about it, again, through an email yesterday. Therefore, I'm not going to provide a legal opinion. I haven't been hired yet. I think the neutral way would get your would be to get your district attorney involved, and she has the right to request an attorney general's opinion on whether or not nepotism exists. Yeah, we got an individual attorney. I don't think it's heard from him yet. So, to declare what we're doing, what we're doing. Sir. We hired an individual attorney. Okay. We agreed two meetings ago to hire an individual attorney, but we hadn't heard from an attorney yet. Jeffrey 
same Bible that Jesus talked about the Pharisees which was in the Sadducees which are lawyers was uh, choking on a gnat and sw swallowing a damn camel. And that's pretty much what you're doing right here. Well, you're choking on a gnat while you swallow the camel. Great, we have several things on this. And yes, it was a mistake. And people make mistakes. I made mistakes. He made. Everybody in this room has made mistakes. We've got several things on this agenda, like giving the pickups back. Well, that's fine and good. But would our money be better spent if we, we covered their depreciation on their insurance? I mean, their deductible on the insurance. I mean, you know, we, we raise their deductible on the insurance thirty five hundred dollars. Get another insurance company. Would we better serve these men? I mean, how are we going to save money? Right now, we're in a position where we're going to save money because we just got rid of a high dollar attorney that we just signed a check for over thirteen thousand dollars for a monthly bill. Well, you don't think you get money for it? I don't think I got no money for it. Sure don't. Did you research it? Do what? Did you research it? I mean, we still have. I, I called and he didn't call me back. We still have some PUC things out there. Mm -hmm. We need to take action on this. You want to take action? Well, I want to make a motion that uh, we hire uh, Kate Leverett and Guy Goodson with Garner as our attorney. Second motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Let the record show. Director Dixon with no one. And just, just for, for the paper, they are the only ones that even did. You don't have to accept the only bid. Clarification, I think, for the people in the community. Uh, I will agree with Hazel Moe that people in the community were very upset about the firing of Huber Oxford because of the transparency issues, and he brought out a lot that this board had abused or whatever you want to use the word. But now, here's my question is, what is the role of, of the new attorney going to be. You know, we had an attorney for the last uh, seven months that Doug, because he was asked by the, you know, the board at the time in, in June, he was asked to, to get to the bottom of everything, to fix this place, which he did. Now, what is, what is the role of the new attorney? Are they going to dig that deep or are they just going to, sure. what, what, what are your expectations now of the new attorney? represent any legal aspects of Trinity Bank. Not, okay. not to do not to do accounting work, not to do managerial work. And if you want to look back on what Mr. Oxford billed us on, I would say 60-65% of it wasn't even legal work. No, and I mean, we, pay, we pay people well to do those two specific jobs. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we should pay an attorney to come in and, and have to do clean up spreadsheets for accounting and, and come up with financials and all that. I, I don't think that's his position. Okay. And I think we paid him a lot of money doing things that wasn't really attorney work. I understand. And, and I don't know who approved that. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That that was the board. He was direct. You know, you and Mark were on the board, but he was right. directed to do exactly, exactly that to get to the bottom of the finances and and, and all that, which he did. Uh, and mm -hmm. I know that someone here said, you know, he was doing the job of the general manager. But the general manager admitted himself that he was preoccupied with, with getting the financial stuff and he and Hubert and Sherry and Barbara, you know, worked hours and hours because that was his direction. And if it wasn't for that direction given to him, we would not know that water and sewer would have a zero, or actually a minus 346,000 uh, account in August of 2021. We would not know you know, that going into all these uh, projects that Trinity Bay contracted on lost millions of dollars. We would not have known that, and right now we would still be in La La Land thinking that there was $4 million. Under the funds. spirit of transparency, I shared with you down at your office why I voted the way I did. I, and I understand that, and this has nothing, you know, what you told me, like I said, it's between you and me. We had an hour and 45 minute conversation. I understand all of that, but. He was given the the direction to do what he did, and and now I know as, as you've been on the board, you don't agree with that, but that was his charge, I guess, to do. And like I said, and he got to the bottom of all of it. So what I want to know is is the new term. Well, I guess you said it very well. She was just going to do legal work. She wasn't going to get involved in accounting or management or numbers or anything like that. I don't think we should pay someone two hundred seventy-five dollars to do our accounting and our. We've already got people for that. 
No, I, I understand, but the people that you had doing that before were giving you false numbers. I mean, that's the whole point. You were giving false numbers for years. And then when Hugh Hawks was hired, he came and he got to the bottom of it and presented you with the real numbers, which y'all don't like. But that's not my question. My question is, and, and Scott, you did answer very well, that she was going to be just legal work representing the, the district and not get involved with management issues, financial issues, or whatever. Okay. Now, there, I mean, yeah, if things come up and we're accused of something, doing illegal, whatever, I'm sure she can represent our best interest in those cases. I mean, it's all here in the, in the thing when they do, so I, I, no, mean, I understand. that's but, what we expect. But again, the other attorney was given an additional an additional charge to get to the bottom of everything in this district. So she will not be digging that deep. Uh, I think it's already been done. We, well, if we did one, we paid a lot for 